Today we're covering everything you need to know about strength training for beginners. I know it can be intimidating. I know you've tried before. You're not sure where to start. I can promise you that by the end of this video, you will have every question you need answered, answered. First, we're gonna explore these six key movements that you can start with right at home with just body weight. I'm gonna show you how to work around injuries and how to make sure you're using proper form and tempo so that you're safe and you're also maximizing your time spent training. After that, I'm gonna take you through an actual circuit, an actual workout that you can use right now or you can save it for later. This is how you should be strength training at home. This is the right place to start. And lastly, I'm gonna give you a little tip that's worked well for thousands of clients that will help you get started faster. When it comes to fat loss, strength training is a key ingredient. Your body is naturally losing muscle over time, which leads to injury, but also the less muscle you have, the slower your body's metabolic rate, which means the less calories you're burning at any given time, which makes permanent fat loss impossible if you're not strength training. Okay, let's dive in. Movement number one is the basic squat. Now, a lot of people shy away from the squat because of knee issues, or maybe it's low back issues, but the squat is one of the most functional movements in the book, and it's important that you understand how to do it properly. You might think, maybe I don't need to squat. Well, if you're getting up and down from a chair at any point in your life in the future, you probably need to know how to squat. It's the same functional movement. I'm gonna show you this from different angles, but to start, we always want about a shoulder width stance, maybe slightly out, maybe slightly within, wherever you feel best, but I think you're probably gonna be best off right here, just outside of the shoulders with a slight angle out with the shoes. I'm gonna show you this from different angles too, so you can really understand the way the body's supposed to move throughout this. But first things first, I'm gonna show you where the knees go and let's think about where we put pressure as we start to move through this movement. So doing a proper squat, you want everything on the heels, all the pressure on your heels, even pull your toes up in your shoes, which will help remind you where you need to be driving the pressure. The second the weight rolls forward to the toes, it's gonna to put some bad pressure on the knees. We don't want that. So regarding the knees too, watch this. So if we're sitting back down into a squat, this is how we want it to look. We want the knees to be stable right? We don't want any of this happening. And that's going to be the body's natural tendency is to have those knees cave. We can't afford that. That's going to put bad pressure on the knees over time leads to injury. So I want you to think from the front and I'll show you from the side. That's probably even more important, but it's pressure on the heels. And then we're keeping those knees in line. And you can use the arms for counterbalance. The more and more you need, the more advanced you get, you'll start to load weight, but for body weight, feel free to extend those hands. Now from the side, really, really important. I'll kind of show you at an angle. So just about anything we do with legs always starts in the butt, right? It's not starting with the knees. If we start the descent first, the lowering first, it's gonna be a lot of bad pressure here. We want all the pressure here on the major muscles, starting with the glutes, the hamstrings, and the quads, right? The big major leg muscles, doesn't matter if you know the name or not, they're working whether you know the name or not. So first part, big posture, right? Shoulder blades together. It's like you're pinching a pencil in your mid back, in your mid upper back, right? So from there, hips are gonna sit back. It's always butt back first, and then we start thinking about going down, right? So it's hips back, you got your counterbalance, you got your big posture, everything's on the heels. And then I'm sitting back slowly, right, into that squat. As deep as you can get, you don't have to get all the way down, especially at first. And then I'm driving up, I keep my toes off the ground. You could use something like a ledge, like a couch, a sofa, a, a table chair, whatever you have handy, just for safety, right? And you can sit back on that touch. Everything's in the right line of movement and then come on up, okay? It's so important as we go through these six movements, form is more important than the amount of weight you're using, than the speed you're using, right? Form first, protect the body, get used to moving in the right form, the right frame of motion. You're gonna get so much more out of the movement, right? So we'll talk about tempos when we get into the actual workout, but let's recap, okay? Pressure's on the heels, shoulder blades are together, hips go back, we sit low, get your counterbalance here if you need, and then we don't want those knees caving in, right? So that's about the tempo and the form that we want for a squat. Everything's on the heels, okay? Let's move on to the next one. Up next, we have a lunge, another big, major compound leg movement, okay? So lunges, I'll show you again head on, and then we'll, we'll play with the side angle. You can have that counterbalance whenever you need it. A slight forward lean in the upper body is good as long as we're not rounding, right? So always think about pinching a pencil between the shoulder blades. Keep that good, exaggerated upper body posture. It's gonna put everything else in there, help put everything else into the right line of movement. So from the front, again, the, knee, the knees. I'll sound like a broken record as we continue to polish form as we go throughout these courses. It's a big stride back, right? I have a slight forward lean. You can use that counterbalance if you need, and I'm standing up. So just like with the squat, all the pressures on the working heel, in this case, that front leg, in this, in this case, my left leg, right? And I want you to watch the knees here. What I'm not doing is that. 
this, this knee is gonna wanna cave as you tire out, this knee is gonna wanna cave. We gotta keep them in that straight line of movement, right, so that we're working the major muscles, we're not putting unnecessary stress on the joints. So from the front, I got the big posture. I'm stepping directly behind my shoulders. I'm not stepping narrow, I'm not stepping too wide, right behind the shoulders, and I'm dropping back. Now the side angle on this one is even more important. As you're starting with lunges, and there are tons of variations to come with the basic lunge, we want 90 degree angles at the knees. Okay, so your counterbalance, whether it's here or just out in front, I'm stepping back, right, and keeping that posture just about 90 degrees, just about 90 degrees, that knee is not passing the shoe. We don't want that excess pressure on the knee at this point at all, right? So I'm coming up, everything's on that front working heel, posture, big stride back, 90 degrees, pause, and come up. Now in this, we wanna be doing the majority of the work on that front leg, right? This back leg is doing just a bit of it, but what I like to do with clients is almost have you pick up that leg off the ground for a little bit as you're coming up to remind the body that will really primarily focus on that front leg. So one more here and stand up, right? One more there and stand up. This is a, an example of a single side lunge, but you can also go alternating, okay? Which is just step back into it, step forward and then switch. Step back and step forward and switch. Many different variations. We'll do the alternating one when we go through the actual workout today. But the last thing to think about is anytime you are doing lunges, Let's move on to the next one, grab a mat. We're gonna get into some push-ups. So for push-ups, before we take it to the mat, I wanna show you what, would, what it would look like from underneath. Not really useful to show you a head-on uh, of me going through these. For a push-up, you're not gonna get much as far as the form goes, but if you're underneath, this is what is important. So say there was a plain glass on the floor, you're standing underneath it, this is how the push-up should look to protect your shoulders. Rotator cuff can really get injured if you're doing push-ups incorrectly. We're gonna negate that by just this little tip. So a lot of people are doing push-ups up here, right? Because you can do more reps, especially as you're just getting started. That's really bad pressure on the rotator cuff, which is the inner workings of the shoulder. If you've lost your rotator cuff, everybody knows somebody that's done that, it's almost impossible to get back. So instead from underneath, instead of this, it's this. So you're rotating, bring the shoulders down. You're not shrugged. You're bringing the shoulders down. And from here, it would look like this. So the hands are basically alongside the upper rib cage and you're pressing from there and ending up there as well, right? So I'm not pressing up this way. It's underneath that way, way, this is the shoulder line. We're way under that. You don't have to be touching as like a yoga push up, right? But somewhere about right there, that's gonna be your sweet spot. Let me show you what this looks like from the side. So as you're just getting started with push ups, you're probably gonna be doing these from the knees and that is totally okay. And I'll show you another variation here in a minute. But either way, I want to teach you how to set up a push-up properly because whether you're doing it on or off the knees, the form is the same, the setup is the same. This is really important. So this alone, this is a high plank. This might be really hard for you and that's totally okay. Your core is engaged. We don't want those hips dropping, right? It's a straight line from shoulders to shoes. Advanced, you can even go a little bit more up, right? As you progress, but right here, right? And if that's tough, cool. This could be a form of core work for you. Uh, it's gonna work your triceps, work your chest without even moving. So this is a full push-up, right? That's what it looks like. Head and neck is in line. Those elbows are in like we talked about. The only thing you're gonna change is drop there. You can bring the heels up, the shoes up, or you keep them on the ground, all right? But my hands are under my chest or my chest is over my hands, okay? We'll do other videos on wrist mobility because that might be bothering, that's okay. So head and neck is in line, we're up dropping, all right? Push-up position. And then same thing, elbows are in. I'm trying to keep flat back the whole way through, core is engaged, and I'm driving up. If that is too hard, my friend, you don't have to go all the way down, right? You can go here and up, and that's totally fine. As long as that motion is where we need it to be, right? We don't ever wanna get up here. I'd rather you literally only do a couple inches of work and come up, and you're gonna be in a better position than if you do start doing this stuff, right? Let me show you one more option if even this is too hard. So your last option is an elevated surface. It could be a countertop, it could be something like this, it could be a bench, it could be the edge of a couch. Doesn't really matter. But oftentimes, higher off the ground is gonna allow for a lot less pressure on those muscles, right, and allow you to get more reps. So if this is where you're starting, that is totally okay. You can adjust these things as you go. You could start with a full push-up, then go to the knees, then do something like this. It's more important that you are pushing the muscles with proper form and range of motion than it is how much weight you are doing.
let's move on to some sit-ups. Exercise number four is the basic sit-up. Now there are a ton of different variations you can do for this, but we're gonna start with the basic old school sit-up you used to do in PE class, right? So the further out the legs are on this, the easier it's going to be, the tighter the heels are to the butt, the harder it's gonna be. So we're starting way out today. And if you are just getting started, I'm gonna show you a few different variations if this doesn't work for you. So stick with me here. But if you can, we got legs flat. We're gonna keep the legs down today, right? We're lying back, reach back with the arms and throw those arms up and try to come up. This is the basic, basic sit up. Now, if that's too hard, I want you to do this. Grab the back of the legs and get up. We wanna be able to control the way down. But if you need to grab the legs, go ahead and do it. Right, I'm gonna show you some options if that is too tough. So if that version was too tough, you can create some leverage. I got some weights here, but it could also be a couch or you could have a partner hold your legs down, hold your ankles down. The principles remain the same. So we're gonna reach back, use those arms again, and grab the back of your legs if you need to get up. Your muscles are still working. And in fact, you're gonna get some bicep and lat work as well. But use those arms for, for some momentum, throw them up, grab the legs as needed, control that way down, and do what you can do. Lastly, if that's too difficult, no problem. We could still activate the core with a similar motion that you will eventually graduate out of and get to the assisted and then get to everything else we've been going through. But this is what you'll do if that's too hard. Take the arms back, up, do what you can do. Just that little lift of trying to get the shoulder blades up off the ground will activate your core. I can promise you, you will be feeling those. Movement number five, we got a basic crossover. Now there are varying levels of difficulty on this. But we're starting back up in that push-up position. This is why getting that high plank push-up position is valuable because it, it leads to a ton, a ton of exercises out of this position. So a crossover basic looks like this, connect and out and switch. Connect, out and switch. So what you're going to find as you first start getting into these, it's gonna be really hard, I'll show you from the side, you'll probably end up somewhere like here, right? And the reason that's, that's happening is because hip flexors might be tight, which are totally normal. These muscles right here that connect hips to the legs. That's typically tight in most people. Totally okay if you can't connect, but what I want you to focus on is that slight forward roll. So this is without the roll, All right? That's as far as you're gonna get. Now with the roll, right? I'm kind of rolling forward. I want you to watch my back foot here. If I'm rolling forward, it's going to allow me to get that further connection. I would rather you do six good reps, say three aside, than 24 where you're not connecting, right? So that extra connect, that extra roll forward that's gonna activate those obliques. And listen, as we're going through the workout here in another minute or so, if you can't get all the way up, if this is hard, hold this. If this is too hard, hold this, right? As you are progressing and you're learning how to get into working out, get out of your own way. Nothing needs to be perfect. So if you can't connect yet, totally fine. Totally fine, you're still gonna activate those obliques. But as you get more and more conditioned, get that extra little roll forward, you're gonna activate the obliques even better. Hey there. This looks like the best exercise yet, right? This is not it. Instead, we're gonna go to a side raise, okay? So key here, from, from head on, this is how it should look. You want that elbow directly under the shoulder. I don't want you out here, so that's gonna put really weird, bad pressure up here. You wanna be right here, okay? So from the side, this stacked, you can do if you can handle it, but I'd say if you're just getting started, put that top leg in front for a bit more stability, and from here, you can stagger the stance as, long, as far as you need to feel supported, right? Try here, if you can do it, we're gonna be bringing the hips up and down, I'll show you from the side, but that staggered stance will allow for more stability, more support, right? So top legs in front, got this down. You can go little teapot, hand on the hips, or you can go here if you need a little bit extra support, but try not to lean on that non-working arm, right? So here, if you can handle it, and we're just coming up and down. If you need to fully set down as you're just getting started, totally fine. You're gonna feel the shoulders working as well, so don't be alarmed if that's, if that's really what you're feeling. Totally normal, but obliques, it's all these side muscles here, right? So we went up and you can get a full set down. If that's easy and you can handle a little bit more, we wanna go up and tap, up and tap. And the last thing I'm not sure if you're able to see from this angle, but we want that kind of forward lean. You'll see me doing here. So this would be like direct up, the hips up, hips up but we want that kind of tilt over. So it's a tap and kind of a lean in, and that's gonna activate those obliques a lot more. Okay, so we got our first six body weight exercises under our belt. If you need to revisit those, or if listen, if by going through the tutorial today and just moving along with me, you're tired, no worries, call it a day. Maybe pick up this workout that's coming up next, next time around, or in a week or two weeks, or whenever you feel ready, 
It's not all or none, my friend. It's the, just the fact that you continue to step through the door on a daily basis is what will get you there. So grab a towel, grab some water if you need it. We're gonna go through an actual workout. I'm gonna do this in real time with you. We're gonna flow from one exercise to the next. You can pause it as many times as you need. And then if you're up for it, repeat the circuit one more time. Right, if you're up for it even more and you're feeling great, repeat it twice more. I would say no more than three total run-throughs is all you need, especially if you're just getting started. Remember, the goal is to stimulate, not destroy, right? So you wanna feel it the next day, but you shouldn't feel absolutely wiped out after a workout. You should feel good, you should feel exhilarated, You've got the endorphins kicking, all good things, all good feelings, and that's gonna kickstart this process that we need for ultimate fat loss. Okay, to keep it simple today, we're gonna stick with the order in which we learn. So we're starting off with a squat, you're already warmed up. I'll do a separate video on proper warm-ups. But today, let's just focus on getting through this first body weight workout. So I'll show you from different angles as we're going through. Let's get in that squat position. Remember, it's slightly outside the shoulders, slightly angled out with the shoes. Got your counter balance as you need. Everything's on the heels. Listen to my prompts here. Butt goes back. Let's drop in that first one. Follow my tempo. This is really important. And up, don't lock those legs out, okay? Right back down for rep number two. Everything's on the heels. This tempo is really important. Okay, we're creating time under tension. We're being safe. And we're maximizing body weight to get enough out of it. I'm gonna talk through most of this, so please excuse my uh, redundant, <laughs> repetitive voice here. Um, but if you get to five or six reps and you are absolutely shaky, stop, right? Or you could stop for a few reps as I'm continuing to go and you can jump back in or you can pause the video, right? We're going to work in per side in some cases, 12 to 15 reps, right? And if that's easy, you'll start to add weight. But today, this is where we are. Two more here, right? Match this tempo. Remember, always pay attention to knees. Last one, a little buckle and up and shake them out. Couple deep breaths, sip of water, pause if you need it, okay? Right into lunges, we're gonna alternate, okay? Always stepping back into a lunge to protect the knees, ready? Big stride back, 90 degree angles. Same tempo, we're leaning forward slightly with the upper body, it's alternated at the top. Okay, switching sides. We're gonna go 10 to 12 reps aside in this, so it's gonna be 24 total, 20, 24, something in there. Right, nice and smooth, I'll show you from the front. Knees are aligned, straight on, counterbalance as you need it. Right, and with that upper body, it's a slight lean forward. Okay, heart rate should be coming up. Legs are big muscles, so they're gonna push that heart rate. You get a lot of calories burned from training legs right now, then the body goes into overdrive, right, by repairing the legs over the next couple days, so you get the elevated metabolic rate. And then over time, adding lean muscle, especially to these major muscle groups, you increase your body's metabolic rate, which means you burn more calories at rest, even when you're not working out. Let's go one more. And come on up, excellent. Okay, let's take it down to a push-up. Shake it out, pause it as you need. I'm gonna show you from the side, and today I'm gonna stick with you, I'm gonna go from the knees. Remember, if from the knees is too hard, find an elevated surface and keep that form and do what you can do. Okay, we're gonna go from the knees. Okay, so from the knees or not, chest is over the hands, hips are flat here, we don't want this. And let's get into it, okay, down slow. Up a little faster than you go down, right? Not too fast. And drive it up. You keep going. Just remember, elbows here, not up here. Keep going. Let's go. Four or five reps in if you're following my tempo right now. Remember, you don't have to get all the way down. And as you tire out, you can do less on depth as long as we're keeping that line of movement where it needs to be. Okay? Let's go about three more. One more, this is it. And good. Pause it as you need, my friend. If you need to, ant, uh, to anchor your shoes on this, remember, you stick them under a couch, have your friend help you out, maybe get the dog to sit on your feet, whatever you need to do. All right, I'm gonna keep them extended, and we're gonna use that momentum. And let's go, sit up, grab the back of the legs as needed, control the way down. And then up, you're always gonna be stronger when you're resisting weight at this point. Right? And this is pushing the weight, moving the weight. This is resisting. You're stronger on the way down. So we wanna take that opportunity to maximize the ability to control more, which is going to recruit more muscle, 
so on and so forth, right? Burning more calories, creating more breakdown, so on and so forth. You're doing good. Keep your breathing even. This is easy for you. Bring in the heels. Be much, much harder, right? Adjust as you need. Let's go two more. Throw those arms if you need them. Grab the back of the legs if you need them. And look at that. You are four exercises down. We're going into those crossovers, okay? Now, if you if the push-up position top is hard enough, hold it. That's fine. You don't need to connect. And let's go cross underneath. Reach that knee across. Remember, we're rolling forward on that back shoe. Roll forward. Do what you can do on the connect. Or it could just be here, right? That's fine today. Totally fine. Do what you can do. Remember, you can pause this. Also, continue. A few more. Let's go two. Last one. And good stuff. To the side raise. Begin that beach pose to start. All right. Remember on this though, elbow is right underneath that shoulder. Now we're going per side. Remember, top legs in front, stagger that stance. This is your support if you need it. Otherwise, go in teapot. Let's come up and tilt in at the top. Breathe through it. Maintain that breathing. Don't hold your breath. Let's go four more. This is a good tempo. Last two. One. And switch. Okay, switch sides. Take a breath. Okay, let's get right in. We got a big break coming after this, and this might be it for you for the day. Let's go. This is where you should be feeling it. That underside, the obliques. Shoulders gonna be feeling it too. Last three. Last one. And you are maybe done, but at least taking a break. Okay, so my heart rate's up. I know yours is. For my super fit beginners, if you want to repeat that, I'll put the seconds where you start where you can just rewind it and repeat that series. You could do it once more or maybe even twice more if you're feeling up for it or if you've done this a few times and you're coming back to it, more power to you. Um, but what I will say, as far as getting started, and the key to getting started is just that, it's just starting. Literally, if this is too intimidating for you, it's okay, it's okay. Anything new is scary, especially when you actually go through the physical difficulty, your heart rate's up, your muscles are burning, something you're not used to. But I can promise you, Stepping through this door will do more for you and your health than just about anything else. We are designed to move. This kickstarts so many key hormonal processes, uh, disease fighting processes, uh, metabolic supporting, injury preventative processes. So if this is too much for you, I want you to do this. And I, this is in all seriousness, whatever chair you're sitting in, stand up and sit down in it for a minute. And if that's where you start today, that's where do as many reps as you can in a minute. And if that's it today, no problem at all. The most important thing is that you start, not that you have everything right, not that your form is perfect. We wanna be safe. I don't want you being in pain, like sharp pain. Muscle burning is one thing, but only sharp pain if you have injuries. We'll talk about how to work around injuries in more of these videos to come. But I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, I should have said this up front, but if you're this far, I hope you've subscribed, liked it, share it with as many people as you can. We need this as human beings. It doesn't need to be intimidating. It can be approachable. I'm going to make sure that that gets through to you. Let me know how I can help you in your journey. I appreciate you being here. Just get started. I'll see you soon.